Good afternoon. Last week we discussed uh, the wind generators and the hydro generators. This week we're going to discuss the sails. What's the difference between code D and code zero and where are we using them? Feel the spray of the waves on my face. Atlantic Indian Ocean Blue. Whoa, land in sight to stubborn. Got me home from where I roam. Okay. <coughs> They are playing music inside, <coughs> so I decided to come out and sit in the garden. It's already getting pretty dry season here in Malawi. <coughs> Sorry. So dry season is uh, is a tough one here in Malawi. There's no rains for six, seven months, so everything just goes brown. Not, not because the grass die is because there's no grass everything goes brown like dirt brown you will just see dirt everywhere no green just empty trees very rarely there's a couple of uh, emergreen trees but most of it is going to go brown and then the dust is getting everywhere my computer my nose the drinks everything just starts to taste dusty and the long way is notorious for dusty places. So, <clears throat> first I need to give you guys some update on the progress of Sisu. Sisu has the bolt is already, I think, three weeks in progress, three or four weeks in progress. Um, the photo that I actually showed you last week is the off deck off sailing Sisu. So, this week they already, or the last two weeks, they already bonded. The, the inner hull, so they've got the outside hull and then they put the balsa wood in the middle and they put the other, the inner hull inside. So the hulls has already been bonded. Um, here you can see how it looks like and very pretty. And the, they are busy putting in the bulkheads and the, the, the dividers in between the rooms and the bathrooms and things like that. So progress has been made. Um, the target date is still the week of the 10th of September uh, that we will do sea trials and handover. So things are going forward. I caught myself staring at, at that Leopard 45 photo and it's like <laughs> soon, soon we're going to be there. So I'm still in Malawi for still nine weeks and five days. 2,000 kilometers south, that direction is Pietru in Pretoria. And then mm, six, uh, 2,000 kilometers more south, that's Cape Town, that's where Sisu has been built. So things are, are looking good. Um, we're on track, we're getting really excited. I think very soon, yeah, can't wait, just can't wait. So, <coughs> with regards to sales, there's a whole new world of terminology out there. And I kind of like new, it's going to be a very different terminology, different, even directions are different, aft and forward and left and right become sports and starboard, it's all like Crude app kind of things and ropes is lines and lines as certain lines is not lines because they are high layouts and you know all of those things. <coughs> so for me, yes, it is a very, very new world, but the sales is even more confusing. I mean, even things like navigation, some countries green is on the left and other countries right is on the left on port side. Huh? Um, why can you not make all the roads the same? Why, why, why is some countries driving on the left hand side, other countries on the right hand side? Why some 220, some 120? It's just, uh, we humans like to make life difficult. 
I'm a I'm a kind of like an OCD person. Everything needs to be <laughs> nice, correct, same standards, standards. So sales. I think I researched and there's a big confusion about the sales. Um, let's start with Wikipedia. <coughs> so Wikipedia is I've got my busy with my second PhD. Wikipedia is not a source that you can trust or use in any scholar papers. So um, I know that, you guys know that, but it's a good thing to start with a conversation somewhere and it's easy to access. So Wikipedia says, the smaller the number is, the bigger is the sale. That's one thing that I noticed. So this is the thing about the sales. Then we also see that we have reachers and screechers. <laughs> Upwinds and downwinds. Um, and all of them have certain names. And then I came across a thing to say what what is this 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 code? The code one, code two, code three, code four, code five, up to code six. And the thing is, it's determined from the head to the clue to the foot. So what is the foot in relation to that line, the pendicular line, uh, the line is like that. What is the percentage of from the lough down and the further? That's the one thing. The other one was like a jib and a genoa. The difference between a jib and a genoa is... If there's a mast and a jib goes like this, it stops there, then it, that's a jib. But the moment it goes past the mast and come back again, then that is a genoa. So based on these things, there is certain rules and regulations that these guys did. Which is cool. I can now start looking at and start to understand what it means to have a big sail or a small sail or a code 2 or a code 3. And... Most of the cruisers, we actually don't need to worry about that. We want to have the standard sail plan, which is well balanced for the boat. Um, the standard one is coming with the boat. And then we want to have, if you're going to follow the trade routes, you want to have some big sail downwind. And if you're not going to follow the trade routes, routes then uh, trade wind routes, then you need to have a sail that's maybe a little bit more up the wind. Categorically, let me just state it before we go further. <laughs> no boat can go upwind. So if we say upwind, it's the smaller angles. I think the Leopard 45 can do 40 degrees upwind. That's the closest it can go. And so if I say upwind, then it is 40 till 90. Um, I know someone is going to say there, no boat can sail upwind. Fine. We... I have now defined that. So let's continue. Okay, so I had to move. We're now at a new location. Same place, just a different table. Um, we were talking about Wikipedia, right? So we already said the bigger the number, the smaller the sail. So it's like a storm jib is then the smallest sail. And a code one is a very large sail for and and it's it's to go closer to the wind uh, upwind the smaller numbers of the wind and to in light breeze so that is where a code one starts so code one is a light air reaching sail then if you look at the code two is medium air so that you first have a running sail and then the code three is a reaching sail for medium air and then you've got the, the two heavy air sails. Again, the, the even number is the running sail and the uneven number is the reaching sail. So, and in a cut six is the storm, storm sail. So the even numbers, if we look at it, is then the, if you start at one, let us say you start at one, that's the odd number. And you remember that one, so odd, Number is code one, which is a reaching cell, big reaching cell. So then 
three will be a reaching cell, five will be a reaching cell. So the other two is in the other numbers. So the the running cells for downwinds. So that is now the code numbers and the way they worked it out. So it's actually quite cool and it's not a I, I think there's consensus about that. Okay, let us look at the cell plan of a standard Leopard um, 45. So if you look at this nice picture where the Leopard 45 is sailing in front of Table Mountain in Cape Town, you will see, and not all the Leopards come out with a square top, so for now just, that's the main cell, not necessarily with a square top. I don't got mine with a square top. But if you look at the Genoa, and the reason why it's a Genoa and not a Jip, is that if you look at a, 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 a Jip, a Jip cannot extend past your mast, while a Genoa can go past it. So it is still a, a the word Jip is a foresail, but it cannot go past your, 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 your mast. So this one is passing the mast with 75%, I think. So it's uh, 50, so it's 150 percent sail. This one, the the Genoa, which is already a very good sail plan. So if you have looked at our theme song, the full theme song, and please have a look at it. It is awesome music from Guppy. Uh, so it was actually my neighbor in South Africa. So. If you look at that trailer, you will see that the leopard, here's a picture of that, the leopard is having a sail, a, a very big sail. People will say this is a code zero. It is actually not a code zero. So let us look why it's not a code zero. First of all, you see it's not very stiff. It has a straight foot, but it is not very stiff. Then let's look at the, the, the place where the catamaran was racing. Um, you know where it was doing the... Um, 18 knots so that video if you look closely again that's the same sail that's sitting here that's coming standard with the with the um, leopard 45 not standard that's an option that you can buy but that's the factory option so if you say i want a, a, a code d or a big sail a spinnaker that's the one that i will give you and that one you can clearly see that the waves is actually the breakage of the waves is on the forward side. So the wind is clearly coming from the 120 degrees. So that is a downwind so, and that's where they got the maximum speed out of, out of the Leopard 45. So let us look at, um, at the polar diagrams for the Leopard 45. So let's look at the polar diagrams of, of the Leopard 45. And this is now with that code D or a downwind cell, which is not a code zero. So let us look at that cell, the, the diagrams. This is a polar diagram. And I need to sit maybe like this. This is a polar diagram. So if you look at the polar diagram, you will notice that there's a big round circle. I think it's going to be big round like this. It might be big round like that side. I don't know. <laughs> I honestly don't know where this picture is going to end. Left or right? I don't know. So, if you look at uh, this, the big circle, that is the degree of the wind coming onto the boat. So the boat is in the middle. Then if you look at the, on, a, on the left hand side, there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. That is the boat speed. So that is what the boat speed is going to do. Now let's look for that big sail. Let's look at, um, you will see there's little brownish lines. Here's some brownish lines with little squares on them. And look at the most bottom one, it's a little number 25, and just for 25 is another line called 20, and 16, 14, 12, and so on. So let us look at the 25 one. So if you dead downwind, if you want to run, then you will do 10 nautical miles. If we follow that line, as the wind is shifting, as the wind is shifting now to the 120, you will see you can actually go up to 15 nautical uh, 15 knots with the same sail plan with the same wind speed so you can see it increases so the downwind doesn't work that well anyway so and it's a very good reason if you can see the wind is now busy blowing so if the boat is going like this you have a sail the wind is now say 25 knots Doof. now the boat is moving 10 knots suddenly this wind the apparent wind is now 15 knots 
So if their boat goes, if the wind is 25 knots, if the boat goes 20 knots, then the parent wind is 5 knots. If the boat goes 25, if it can, goes 25 knots, the apparent wind will be 0 knots, and no one can sail in 0 knots. And this is the problem with downwind sailing. The faster you go downwind, the less apparent wind you will have, and the slower, actually, your boat will start to sail. So they, that is the, the problem of dead downwind. So if you, if you remember in the, um, the sails, the reason why we can go so fast lately, not like the square riggers, is that our sails is designed like an aeroplane, an aeroplane wing. So that is like an aerofoil, and an aerofoil is, is, is bent like this. So if the wind goes, so it's like this, aeroplanes pick up. So the wind is now like this, and as the wind comes across here, it's actually making a, a, a lift. Which is, if it was a plane, the plane would have been lifted, but now it's like this, so it's a pool, if you want to say it like that. So let us look at, at now why, uh, if you go to angle, your apparent wind will start moving forward. And as your wind moves forward, this wing of air that is coming now over your, 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 your sail is creating a pull. So that's why you go faster if you go with an angle rather than 100% downwind. This is also the reason why we can go kind of like upwind and the square riggers couldn't go upwind. They can always go downwind or a certain angle of downwind. So that again is showing me, look now at the, look again at the 25 line at the bottom. You see it stops at 120 degrees, which means this is a downwind sail. It doesn't go faster if you go around. It doesn't go faster if you're on 100% broad reach, 90 degrees, if the wind is coming 90 degrees. You don't go faster. You, you, you stop sailing. The sail doesn't work anymore. So, and this is why the code zero is different. Just, just for interesting sake, if you look at the, the top lines, there's four, uh, a couple of square blocks at the top. So these guys are starting around 40 degrees. So this is the angle that the Leopard 45 can go upwind. We cannot go 100% between 0 and 40 degrees, no go zone. So we cannot go there. We will start stalling the, the boat and the wind will just start pushing the boat backwards instead of sailing upwards. So that's where the wind starts. So that is with the jib and so on. So let us look at, let's look at some, let's look at some numbers. If you look at, here's a big table, and again, on the left-hand side is the, is the degrees. You see we start again at 40 degrees, and then a dead run at 180 at the bottom. On the top is the wind speed, and then in the middle is the boat speed for the Leopard 45 with that sail plan, so with, the, with that big sail and the main sail up. Um, so you can see if we look again at the 25 one, the maximum speed there for 25 knots of wind is 15 knots and yeah, 15 knots basically. But look again, you go faster from from the 90 degree. You can see we've got a 80, a 75, a 70. That is on 12 knots. If you go down, you've got 100, 110, 120, 130, 140. So we actually sailing better at those angles from 90 degrees actually let us say from 70 degrees all the way to 140 degrees this is where the leopard 45 will excel with that sail plan so just some useless information if you want to ever want to know that so what make the code zero so contentious because if you look at at northern sales or you look at the South African sail makers if you, if you go and just generally google it if you even talk on a discussion groups then some will say it's a it's a downwind sail others will say it's an upwind sail so what happened why why is this confusion there and confusion there is so the Volvo Ocean Race when they were still defining their own boats and own sail plans and stuff before this, this this nice super nice boat where everyone has equal boat equal sails equal everything they 
they had to make their own soap plants and these soap plants were done by these codes so they had to make codes but they wanted to have a bigger sail to go upwind and to conform to the numbers they made it a code zero to say this is the largest sail you can have on the boat so code zero will be your largest sail to start off but they want to go close to the wind and that will not be allowed by the racing guys and now then I said it is a grinnaker it's asymmetrical spinnaker which they now kind of like circumvented the thing to say it's a spinnaker so you're allowed to have two of these big sails on the boat a, a, code, a code one and a spinnaker so and this is where the confusion started the confusion started then because the code zero was actually designed to go upwind, uh, not depth upwind, we know now that, but to go upwind, while spinnakers and a grinnaker is designed to go downwind. But they classified it as a grinnaker, they made it look like a grinnaker. So the, the, the laugh and the foot, the relationship or the ratio is the same as a grinnaker. But it is much more tighter, and we will see later on how much tighter it is. So it is designed, very tightly designed, so it can go on the up, uh, wind up, uh, smaller numbers. So, the short of the matter is, actually, you can now go, and you can say, I want to have a code zero, which means it's the biggest sale. Then you just specify to your sailmaker whether you want to use it more in upwind conditions or downwind conditions. Like if you're going to do trade winds, you would like it to be in a downwind situation. So when you then talk to your sailmaker, you say, I want to have a code zero downwind. Um, and then the people will build or make the sail for you for downwind conditions. So the same is happening then for when you want to do upwind. So, and this is where the code D came in. So, the code D, if you look at the code D, it is designed by Delta Sales, and that's why the D is there. But for me, the D is for downwind. Uh, I don't think French will be happy with that, but this is how I remember a code D and a code zero. So, code zero is for upwind, and code D is for downwind. D for downwind. Here is the picture. If you can see the on, the, on your right hand side is a code zero, in the middle is a code D, and then this uh, asymmetrical spinnaker. I got it from the the, uh, the French um, sailmaker site, uh, Delta Sails. So everything is in French. But let us quickly just point out a few things. If you look at the laugh, the the point where the sail is attached to the to the what do you call that thing, mainstay. Uh, four stay. So let them, let me quickly show you a couple of pointers here. Uh, first one is look at the luff, the point where the sail is attached to the mainstay. If you look at the code zero, it's very straight, so you can actually roll it up, you can furl it up. The code D is a little bit less straight, but look at the spinnaker. It is very roundish. It's supposed to be round to catch the wind. Look at the foot as well. So you will see the code D has the same foot as a spinnaker, while the code zero is more like a, a Genoa. Then you look at, the, at the, the leech. If you look at the leech, you will also see the differences, that the code zero is very straight. So from these pictures, you can see that the code zero is definitely designed as a stiff sail. It's not designed for a downwind sail. It's designed for an upwind sail. Because the moment you go more closer to the wind, close reach, you need to start pulling in your, your, your cleat it in more what do you call it you must make your sails more stiffer and if you go downwind you need or like um, 90 degrees uh, uh, broad reach then you need to let the sails out so if you let the sails out is out I think that's the right terminology if you do that then they catch more wind and it is better so based on this okay so why do I want then uh, uh, code zero, uh, why do I want a code zero? Or why do I want now two of these big sails? I think we explained this now that the code zero is mainly for uh, longer reach to upwind and a code D is for downwind. So we get a code D and here is the thing from, 
from Delta um, sales. Delta voila, voila, and my French is not that good. So there you can see a Genoa can can go that wind. So the this is a different sales, right? So the round circles now is a different sales, and the boat is where the Delta sales logo is, and then the wind direction or is zero ten that arc. So if you look at that, you can see the code D actually starts from around sixty all the way. To 40 and theoretically it can also go all the way to 180 while the code 0 is 50 degrees to 110 degrees so the code 0 extends your reach so you can go a little bit closer to the wind with a code 0 than with a code D but you can see the code D is mainly made to go downwind so I hope this is now a little bit more clear for you we are thinking of using a code 0 and a code div because we're not always going to go in downwind um, trade winds. We, you guys know our plans more or less is that we will use the, the touristy where everyone goes kind of thing to get our sea legs, get, our know, get to know the boat and then we will just bugger off to <laughs> very very different places than normal people go. So that means we will actually at one point sail um, more upwind than downwind. We're not going to follow the trade routes. In the beginning, yes, to find our way. But after that, we will start doing our own thing. And that for we will need a code zero. The code zero will, if you can see, that range of the code D is pretty impressive. So because the code D is so impressive, we are going to actually have the code D more of the time up. So I've asked Marcel to do two things. The first thing is, and it is, sorry, it's based on Catamaran Impi's um, advice. So Brent actually told me to do these things. He wished he had done it, and then he blew his sail, and then he did it. So I'm following what Catamaran Impi is his suggestion. So the first one is we make it not that light. The code D, our code D will be a little bit stronger to start off. And then also it will have uh, ultraviolet protection as we fill it up because to put it up and put it down, put it up, put it down all the time is going to be a little bit hectic. Um, if you see a squall coming on, you have to put it down, right? There's a big sail, the wind is going to whack you. And because a catamaran don't deal over, we will just, doof, there goes the sail. So we would like to have the sail a little bit stronger as if we start feeling the wind is here, trrr, we can quickly ratchet up and fill it up but it means that sail is staying on the on the stay all the time so we want to have a ultraviolet protection also around it so our code d will be a little bit heavier still big but a little bit heavier um, and of course we don't want to make it so heavy that the catamaran flips over <laughs> it would be easier to replace a sail than to replace a catamaran i think uh, i can just imagine we start doing like a hobby cat on two two hulls <laughs> absolutely crazy <laughs> i don't think cruising cats is designed for that kind of nonsense so no we don't want to to compromise the rigging and we also don't want to compromise the flying on one hull thing we 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 not the oracle team <laughs> yeah but just soon enough you will hear me putting in foils hydrofoils below and then we're actually sailing above the water a 16 ton boat above the <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> but yeah so i think you guys uh, know now what's the difference between a code d and a code zero and how the sales is working this um next week we're going to discuss and this is a topic this is a topic that I try to avoid um, because in the sailing community this is like heresy, right? And it is electrical motors and diesel motors. I'm a super fan of electrical motors. I'm going to have a big battery bank on my boat and a big solar system on my boat. So I am very excited, but tune in to next week not next week next episode because next episode you will see what is the pros and cons of 
diesels and was a Connors and Pros of electric motors. That's going to be interesting. See you next episode. Let's